Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, <laughs> well, it's you know lunchtime. It's afternoon for us, it but is. it's morning for a lot of our yeah, viewers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so hello to all of you on the West Coast who are viewing us in the morning. Oh, that's right. I didn't yeah. think about that Well, I mean, it's still 1158. We're fine. Okay, we're yeah. fine. <laughs> no, but I totally, totally didn't think about the people in California being like, hey, it's nine o'clock, yeah, you know? early. So yeah, we drove to Chicago this last mm -hmm. week and the time zone messed with my mind yes. and I was like wait why do I still have three hours to go on my trip right well you know, I was like oh when I went on my trip to Missouri mm, so we lost yeah. time but it was also time change so I lost that an hour horrible. and then another <laughs> I lost two hours wow can you imagine oh, oh. my gosh it was wild yeah so hi guys, happy Thanksgiving week. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. Welcome. Let's make sure we're on and we're good and I see us and I hear wow. us. Okay, all right, so. We welcome. have some neat things planned for you today. Um, we are going to talk to you about some giveaways and things like that, but we are going to be sharing answers to questions that you have asked that we thought would be interesting. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so we have we had asked you guys to go ahead and ask us some questions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we try to come up with fun things to do each week for you. Yeah. But sometimes it's just nice to be able to jump right into what you're what you're wanting. So before we get too far into it, let's talk about giveaways. Giveaways. So we Who's feeling lucky. Put yes. your hand up in the chat. <laughs> yes, give us some hearts. We know you guys all love giveaways. Yeah. So today our giveaways every 10 minutes without interrupting Patty. Um, <laughs> we are going to give away a $10 Ooh. gift card shopping spree. So Yay. whoever wins That's those, awesome. um, we'll just pick someone who's randomly commenting and chatting and all of mm -hmm. that stuff with us. And then we'll message you and we'll send you a code that you can use for $10. And then shopping. for tomorrow's grand prize giveaway, we're actually going to give away three grand prizes. Mm -hmm. And they are going to be thirty dollars shopping spots. Wow! Wow! For three, who needs free stuff? Free stuff, you guys. I know that a lot of you are already planning your shopping. How many we brushes are, can you buy? How many? $30? Yes. And you know. we will announce those tomorrow afternoon. So for those of you who are catching us on the the replay, who unfortunately are working like we are today, <laughs> then you can still be entered to win. We will announce this tomorrow. You're gonna like, you're gonna share, you're gonna comment, and that's yeah, and how you- and caring, um, sharing is caring. So um, when you share with other painting groups and all of that stuff, mm -hmm. you're helping us do the things and the algorithm for Facebook and all of that kind of stuff. And then you wanna make sure if you like what you're seeing on this live, um, go to YouTube and subscribe to our channel there and that will tell you if you ring the bell it'll tell you when yeah. we have new content and what are we posting what did we post last so week so last week let me pop up my thing here i have i was up. gone last week last week we did announcements the secret the secret to cleaning your paintbrushes mm. the right way so if anybody saw that would you mind sharing in um in the is it chat on facebook mm -hmm. is that yes the chat in the chat, that would be interesting. Um, I think that just knowing how to clean your brushes is foundational. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. this week, if you want to grab the one behind you, the joy, which oh, to the world, this one. okay, guys, I'm this not week, grab that. it's gonna okay, fall down. This so the joy behind Patty. This week we are going right to there. do um, three ways to paint faux planks. And we are using our joy project that you guys have loved that we have shared in the past. So we are going to use that to show you how to paint fake planks. What's really fun about that project is I, as soon as I got done, I was like, here are three ways. And I was like, I had to kind of think about it. How would I do it three different ways? And then the minute we got done filming, I was like, wait, I thought of two more. Wait, we have more. So there's a ton of ways. <laughs> yeah, um, but you know what? Like planked surfaces are expensive. Expensive. They're super expensive, yeah. And so faux it is so Yeah, good. and it looks real. Yeah. And nobody will know. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's what we're releasing this week. And um, as we're talking about giveaways, if you guys are not on the newsletter yet. Oh, you need to do this. Go yeah. to studior12.com. You're going to get a big spinny wheel pop up. Mm -hmm. Sign up for the newsletter because we are starting our holiday sales 
tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's, you know, Black Friday and free things for Thanksgiving and um, how to do things mm -hmm. and um, just notifications. We don't usually put any kind of sale on Facebook. Right or on YouTube. Yeah. We do it through our newsletter only, so mm -hmm. if you are a subscriber, um, you will get notified about those sales and you want to know about that so you can save money. Right. You know, that's just amazing. And then, of course, to learn new things as well. Sure. We, we post a lot of educational things in there. We do step-by-step um, -step things. We share blog posts. And, and showing even just samples of things that we've painted. Yeah. And um, pretty, pretty stuff, you pretty know. things. Okay, we yeah. have our first question. Okay. Tina Griffin wants to know, do you guys use different size brushes for different stencils? Um, yes, as a matter of fact, um, I have an example right here. Let me jump right on that. So I'm going to talk about these um, letter stencils here in just a minute. Um, these are alphabet stencils. And if I was doing a little one, I would use a little brush. And I don't use little very often because... Let me grab... There's one on the wall back here. So little, little, little. One of them. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if I wanted to stay away from my other people on the on the stencil, I would use a little one and I could just kind of scumble with that. But if I was doing a great big jump, giant guy like this, it would be very slow and very splotchy to do. So yes, I use little for little and big for big. So that is the answer. What was her name? Um, that was from Tina. Tina, thank you for the question, Tina. Um, and Sherry has a very important question. Sherry yeah. wants to know if um, deep fry or oven turkey. Oh, oven. <laughs> oven. <laughs> I have a guilty, guilty, guilty confession. I have never had a deep fried turkey. Uh. Never. We might have to, Steve. Steve, I'm coming to your house. <laughs> We're going to have to do it. No, and, and then Fridays. to be super fair, my husband um, brines our turkey, and then he puts it on the rotisserie. So um, the rotisserie makes it into the most tender and delightful thing you've ever eaten. So I just have never been curious to do it, I guess, because the yeah. rotisserie is so good. Yeah, and I don't Amazing. like turkey, yeah. so I prefer ham. <laughs> <laughs> I like turkey. And Glenna says she loves your blouse today. Oh, thank you so much. I love this one too. It is um, not good to paint in bell sleeves. I, <laughs> I think you that. wore bell sleeves when, <laughs> when I was gone too. Yeah. So we're going to have to remember to see. Yeah, I, um, I think two years ago when I bought this blouse, um, Macy's was doing a whole bell sleeve thing. And mm -hmm. I went batty for bell sleeves. Yep. And um, yeah, and then I dragged them through my paint. But rubber bands work really good. But today yeah. I'm not going to be doing too much painting. No. I'm going to be doing a little bit of something different. Yeah, so we had some questions mm -hmm. that were asked to us prior to today's live that we wanted to make sure we touched on. So yeah. the first one comes from Donna. And Donna said, when you have a stencil that doesn't fit the wood you are using, do you put your stencil in the middle or start it to the right or left? Okay. So I'm going to show you some examples. I'm going to show you... Um, some reasoning and some talking about this thing because I think that um, people are super, I, I am like this in some ways. Um, like if the stencil is set up a certain way, then um, it feels like you have to use it exactly how it comes to you. So when you don't have a wood surface that's the right size and it's a different you know shape, um, for instance, this um, door hanger, um, what are they calling them, door? A door hanger. Do door hangers. Yeah. Yeah, this is like, if you go to um, Pinterest and search door hanger, you will see the world of what you can do for her on your front door. Anyway, but like this one is a round door hanger, and I, this is just so much the same color, I'll move that away. And what's interesting is you could just, you know, plunk that right in the middle um, and leave all the white space if you wanted to, but this actually pairs kind of two trends, the door hanger trend, the round surface trend, and then using these stripes across your um, surface. And um, that's a neat way to use up and eat up some of that white space that you would get if you plunked it right in the middle of your stencil. So kind of a neat way to use a stencil when you're uncertain or you end up with like a round thing that you can paint on or something like that. So that's one way. And then the other way is this was a project that is on, is this Relax and Unwind on mm -hmm. YouTube as well? No. Okay. Okay. So that, that is not on YouTube. This one is a project that is on YouTube now? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. I forget what I painted last week usually, so I'm not always for sure. Anyway, 
This one, we took advantage of how the stencil was laid out and then we shoved it way over to this side and we anchored it with this, um, this is double stick tape with little um, rubber feet and we made those look like they were um, metal. And I love that in the video. If you wanna learn that technique, go check that video out. But by shoving it way over here and it left all of this beautiful white space, that is also a really, 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 really big deal on um, in the home decor uh, marketplace. So, and they're doing a lot of these super big, um, also just a shout out to us, we just recently launched a bunch, 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 bunch of extra large things or we're currently launching we them. We have not yet. That we have not launched them. Okay, they're coming. Um, so, I mean a bunch um, and they are like big things. So you can do those for like the over your bed, um, your dining room wall, that kind of thing. So uh, just kind of keeping up with the trend and stuff like that, that is coming. So you're gonna wanna watch for that. That's also why to sign up for that newsletter is because we're gonna announce when things are released on the newsletter, so you'll get to see that in real time. Okay, yep. we, are we ready to draw for um, I'm gonna go ahead mm -hmm. and do a giveaway. So we've had a couple people said that they're having problems with um, their video freezing. It's not over here, but that uh, on, when I'm watching it, it's not showing it's freezing, but that doesn't mean it's not. Um, so jump out of it, jump back in, see if that helps. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to do the first $10 shopping spree to Sorry. Joyce Jamie. So Joyce, we will message you and we will get your $10 yeah. shopping spree sent over. Congratulations, Joyce. Okay, so the next thing, you wanna talk to me about the next um, question. The next question, let me get back to it, was from Denise and <clears throat> Denise said, do you ever use a slightly damp paper towel to wipe all the dust off your wood after you've sanded? Okay, Denise, I think that's a really good question and I'm gonna take that question and I'm gonna go all the way around all over it because I have some, it reminded me of things that might be very intriguing for people. Um, and so we're gonna go into the sanding question. The question is, is do you wipe off with a wet paper towel? I think that's a really good idea. Um, I tend to, if you guys have watched me, I do this weird thing where I, I sand <laughs> and then I wipe off, you know? And so if I was nervous about the, it having loose color and stuff like that, I would totally do a wet or a damp paper towel. So, um, but I wanna talk about framing things with sanding and some different techniques that you can do with framing things. And that is, um, today I've got things already painted and I'm gonna show you how I would use sanding. Um, so her question about sanding is what got me it, yeah, excited kind of, about it. kind of it, sparked. It blew up, yeah. So you guys, when you ask questions, um, this is literally, how we decide what we're going to be mm -hmm. talking about um, next week yeah. and stuff like that. And some need visuals and some Carrie can just, you know, type a quick thunder yeah. typer. This is my impersonation of her typing. Oh, Amy says that she is watching while making pumpkin rolls. Amy, we will Amy, send them to us. We'll message you our P.O. Box address <laughs> so you can send us pumpkin rolls. <laughs> oh man, you, you know, I, also another confession, I have never had a pumpkin roll. You okay? I mean, this is I, my my upbringing. Is you guys like <laughs> satisfactory. Uh, Patty needs a Thanksgiving overhaul. We are going to have to do a Studio R12 stencils Thanksgiving, probably next week. Next, because, yeah, so yeah. we're going to do a post Thanksgiving and let Patty have. Like all I'm going to get things. a deep fried turkey and a pumpkin roll. What else have I not tried? I do not um, know. What else is? What is? Um, what are you guys' traditional foods? Type it down. I'm there. making sweet potato casserole. Okay, I, I grew sweet potatoes this okay, year, so I'm making um, that. One of my specialties is my pump, my pecan pie cheesecake. Sounds so good. Um, and then my favorite thing to make, and it's not for everyone, but my horseradish carrots. Oh gosh, that sounds good. And it's it's like the baby carrots, and it's a casserole, and there's horseradish and crackers, and oh my gosh. Okay, so um, Nicole says she makes dirty rice dressing. Oh my. Please that send recipes. Good. Okay, we just need to have a Studio R12 get together. Yeah. So and we're, and we're sitting here, our like, bellies. Yeah, we're like gonna eat after. We're planning you know? <laughs> what we're doing for lunch: cornbread dressing. Mm. So if you make things. cornbread dressing, do you put oysters in the cornbread dressing? Isn't that a traditional thing? I think so, Nicole. You'll have to let us know if you use oysters in mm -hmm. yours. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let's jump back into what we're talking about here. So my tummy will stop growling. Um, okay. So this is a tile stencil, okay? And the tile stencils are really fun. This is an example of um, a simple one. Oh, I guess this is actually, 
Did you fill in the middle? Was this four pieces? Nope, that was one piece. Okay, one piece. Yep. Okay, so this comes, you know, like that. Um, this one is, you can see where there's a dividing line right there. And so you can take just the, the tile and then you can just turn it and make it into a bigger tile. And then these are super popular if you've done any home remodeling or seen it in like Home Depot, you know, in the big box stores. Um, these tiles in your bathroom, on the floor, on the wallpaper, you know, all of this, these make such great, um, great um, on trend decor statements. So and I'm gonna say something yeah. real quick. Yeah, you yeah. guys are gonna wanna stick around to the end because we have yeah. something really cool we're gonna announce about the um, tile stencils. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, you wanna, you wanna stick around yeah. at the end for that. It's a thing we don't do very often and we're gonna do it um, today. And it's gonna be like over Aww. quick. <laughs> Somebody else doing food? No, I was just, <laughs> So I have a sanding block. This is going to be an affiliate link um, in our links. Um, and then if you go on to studior12.com and you go to the blog um, mm -hmm. there, there is a blog post that has all of the things that we use that we don't carry on our website. So um, that's just like one place that you can go and you can be like, okay, what was that sanding block thing? And go find it and then go yeah. get what you what I've already vetted for you in a way. Okay, so this is super heavy. I need to weigh this one day. Um, I would, I don't know if it's a pound, but it's heavy. So what I like about that is it adds like the weight when I'm sanding. So I wanna talk about sanding things. I wanna talk about how we can frame things and how we can do, um, make our project be a little bit more. So when you have something like this tile, this could have been left very crisp, like this one, or you can sand through it. And the sanding through it is going to make it be um, have some character. Steve, I used your note. <laughs> he put, I couldn't think of a character word like 20 times when we were talking about this. It was like, he put a note on my camera. Um, okay, so this is um, 60 grit. I think it's 60, right? And then this is 120. This is what I would use to just knock back texture. And actually, I have an example of that. Um, Carrie painted this one. This one was a YouTube video, right? Yes, I yeah. do have a video on that one. Okay, so um, this is a really neat way to frame something. She took just a pattern stencil, but when I ran my hand over it, it's so nice and smooth. And there's a couple ways that you can make your project not feel stencily. Um, number one, um, our stencils are made out of seven mil mylar. Um, if you use stencils that are heavier, like 10 mil, um, kind of like the ones like little kids stencils are made out of or whatever, um, they leave really heavy ridges and that makes the project, in my opinion, this is completely opinion time, um, this makes the project feel crafted versus arted, if that makes sense. So I really do like a more finished product when I'm making my stencil projects. So I use the thinner stencils, but it's not thin like floppy. Um, we tried five mil once and that was a train wreck. 7.5 seems to be the mm -hmm. sweet spot. But Carrie, when she painted this, um, she applied thin layers. So through her stencil, she used really light pressure and then did the swirling um, to get everything nice and not thick, if that makes sense. So by applying thin layers, that makes it um, really lovely. So, but on this project where I wanted to keep it nice and crisp, I would use the 120 sandpaper and I would just go over it and I would get that. And you see, I'm always doing that with my hand. And um, I would give it just that nice settle down, anything that's raised up, and that's gonna make it more finished. Um, if you finish it with a matte varnish or a wax, it's gonna take it to the finish line and you're gonna feel really good about that. So um, that is one way to frame a project. Um, also, that goes with that first question, Carrie. Um, if your stencil is little, Mm -hmm. and you feel like you have to take up that yeah. space, then that's a really neat way to do it too, is to suck it in with some framing. Yeah. Um, and that way you can, you know, frame. Well, and that's, you know, why we did that one that way. We loved that stencil mm -hmm. and the design of the many have eaten, few have died. It's just such a funny thing. Yeah. But yeah. it was just there. Yeah. Yeah, it was just kind of blah. It was just there and there was white space. I'm like, mm -hmm. what can we do to just yeah. put yeah. it over the top? Yeah, and that just, it mm -hmm. makes it kitcheny, it makes yeah. it dinery, yep. you know, all of those things. Okay, so now we've taken our um, wrong grit. 
So it's nice to have two of these um, so that you have your stuff loaded. The way that you um, have to load this, I'm not going to show you how because it's really terrible on camera, but you expose the teeth in there. I don't know if you can see it in the overhead. Um, my fingers are probably in the way, but there's these metal spikes in there. And so you have to cinch it in there and push it down and then do it on the opposite side. And I think we have a video on that. It's somewhere it on buried? our Facebook. It's yeah. not on YouTube. I'll have to see if I can. It's yeah. in our Facebook videos. Yeah. So yeah, we, we have done this on camera. We will maybe do a how to mm -hmm. do Just things. That'll be maybe a, a future cast. Okay, so we're gonna go on here and I'm gonna show you just like how rough you can be with your um, stencil and how you can frame this. So I'm gonna go on here. Now, number one important thing to remember with any of the antiquing steps is that you want to go in one direction unless you have a reason to go in another direction. But mainly up the edge will be going in the long way and then down so all of my lines will go in the same direction. So be careful with that. If I go in and over and around and I swirl and do all of that, then it's going to make my eye go crazy and it's not gonna look pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and go distress it even more than it is right now. So I'm gonna dig into that and see that's already a nice big swipe right there. This is kind of a conversation on framing. So I can go in there. So I'm. Really, um, I don't know if you guys have caught it in past lives, but I've called these my brush before. Um, my fingers are my brushes. Um, my fingers are erasers. Um, this is a brush because it is making a painted technique using sandpaper. Okay, so I'll go up the other side and then get those edges. And then sometimes what I do, so this is like a, um, like detail sanding. Um, sometimes what I do, if you go flat, it's just gonna go flat across and kind of, it sort of makes like an eyebrow and it's just not as pretty as it could be. So I will press over on one side of my sander to bring some lines in. Okay, while you are sanding, yep. I'm going to Sorry announce, about the noise, too. Um, I'm going to announce our next winner. Um, ba, ba, ba. Um, okay, I'm going to try to say the last name. This is someone who's new, I believe. I've not seen this person before. Our next $10 giveaway winner is going to be Justin Refuse. Let me know how to say your last name. Um, but I do have a quick question from Justin. Mm -hmm. Justin said, good afternoon. I'm making buffalo plaid Christmas signs nice. for in my picture frames. I purchased a stencil from you guys and love it. I'm wondering what is the best grit to make the signs look rustic? Okay, so I use, okay, so this 60 grit is super, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's crunchy. Um, but the 60 grit to me is going to be your, um, if I push hard, I get a light sanding. If I push medium, I get medium. So I can use this and get like three grits out of it. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a really good question. Look down here on this board and notice that how that just framed in the piece. And then if I, you know, flip it over this way. Now, this is just kind of, I don't know, it's just kind of open and whatever. Now there's a couple of things you can do. You can leave it alone. Um, I'm gonna take this place. I don't think we've gone very stainy in uh -huh. our videos at all. I'm gonna take some black, and this is very thin. It's a water-based stain, and um, do we link? I don't think we have a link for the water-based stain. Do not. Yeah. Um, any water-based stain will do. Now I've got my brush, which is my paper towel, and I have wetted a corner of it, and I'm going to dip that into that black paint. Watch what happens right here where I have sanded and revealed the grain of the wood, if you will. It just really gets in there and it makes it like filled in. So I can wipe that back. And so notice that that just warmed up that whole corner with just a little rub of yeah. a paper towel. So this is what's neat about sanding is it reveals opportunities for you to add more depth to your project. So if I went back around there, a little bit more water, I like to keep that wet. 
Just go across and then wipe it back with a clean part. That is just so nice and deep. I could go, if I wanted to be just like really picky, I could go and give it just a little bit more at the edges. And what I love about this is I could go and kind of just wipe it completely back. So I could take it away if I wanted to. So this is a super forgiving um, technique. So that is uh, like one of the things that I really like to do. So Debbie was asking, mm -hmm. are you pressing real hard um, when I'm on your sanding? I believe it was a couple of minutes ago. <clears throat> so it's really going to depend on it's I do the three. One is if I didn't want to make a big difference, I would drag with my the weight of this in my arm. Mm -hmm. And then if I wanted to be like, mm, I need to knock that down just a bit. I would dig in and then if I wanted to really get at it, I am digging. So see yeah. how that just removes a big yes. bunch of yeah. stuff right there. So but I really love the sanding technique. I love anything with character. Um, we were talking about wrinkles earlier and it's apparently I have a lot of character. <laughs> and I announced Justin's name correctly. So I'm going to give myself nice. a little pat on the back. That's always the scariest thing about announcing yeah. winners is that you're going to butcher Amen. someone's name. <laughs> yeah. So then I want to jump over here to this project. Um, this is also, uh, this is probably one of my very favorite that I've ever painted in a long time. Um, it is all all of the rustic, mm -hmm. all of the character, all of the things, and it's got the wax resist, um, it, it's just the fake planks, mm -hmm. um, it has sanded um, technique, it has antiquing technique, it has all, like I think it looks like an old sign. Um, this is also on YouTube, so make sure yep. hop over to YouTube and um, subscribe. Yeah. So, um, but in this case, I did um, sanding to get the distressing through the letters and then I came up and sanded and I had wax up there and did a wax resist. I'm not going to show the wax resist today but we will do, I'll write that down. Yeah we'll wax resist is super cool. Go to this video and watch this one. This is like I don't know it's like alchemy or something like that. It's really really fun. <laughs> so um, and then I also went through and did a just um, antiquing technique on the edges. So what I want to do now is take these plain, simple tile boards that we have painted and I want to show you how to do some of this antiquing and distressing so that you can frame your piece. But notice that when you have that framing, it keeps your eye in the project. And that is kind of the goal is you want to bring the eye in and let the eye see the stuff. So I'm going to take that away. And that's why framing. Mm -hmm. um, framing is just super important to show to show off the art in a way. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm gonna say Jarita just messaged and commented and I she said, I've always been afraid to use 60 grit, mm. but that looks great. And it's so funny because there's a lot of us here that are afraid to use it too, yeah. that you know, you work so hard and you paint this beautiful picture yeah. and then you go wreck it. Well, <laughs> I, I feel like that's, it's, so the fear is real, but, like this changes the art completely. You know, it makes it into the the character driven cool piece. I feel like you're leaving money on the table. Sure. If well, you and don't. putting them side by side. Mm. If we did if we did the same stencil and we did it with and without, one of them is going to be really pristine and clear yeah, yeah. and more of an upscale fancy mm -hmm. and then the yeah. other one's going to be more rustic so it really just depends on what home Agreed. decor you're, you yeah, have. Yeah yeah and you know and like if you were doing like a blue delft kitchen you would never distress an antique it. Right. You know you would totally and and really this um this kind of tile um um squares for the floor and stuff like that and by the way on the tile this is like a gonna sort of lean to a tile conversation today. Um, on the tiles, we actually took, it took us almost a year mm -hmm. to develop all of the tile shapes and sizes. And what we did is we made them so that you could fit them on your bathroom tile sizes. My husband used to have a tile company um, where he did um, people's bathrooms and kitchens and stuff like that. But um, we sized them so that your individual shapes would fit on actual standard sizes of tiles. And so when you're looking to paint over, like I have um, one room left in my house I have not renovated and it is a avocado green bathtub with um, 
uh, some sort of peach colored something or another. And But I could go right in there and I could um, paint those t the tile patterns. I can't do much about the avocado green bathtub unless I just replace it. But um, but the little individual tiles, I could just paint them and update them um, with regular paints. You just need to prep it right, prime it right, and then seal it right. And then you can remodel for cheap. You know, two or three little stencils will get you there. So anyway, but now I want to show you what happens if I take this blue and white and what happens if I distress it. Okay, so let's see what the difference is. I've got one clear and one not. And so I'm gonna go in here. And then what is really interesting I'm finding here, depending, we've got a, uh, what's the hangy Command thing? Strip. Command strip, <laughs> good lord. We've got a, uh, <sighs> yeah, command strip on there. Anyway, um, so depending on who painted the surfaces, um, this has got like probably two or three coats. White doesn't base coat very well. It's a little bit harder to get through. So you're gonna need to use a little pressure if you've really coated your board. All right, so get that. And we'll just start rocking our way through it. We call this um, sanding is my cardio, right? That's actually on- It's on our cup. On our cups. So on the back of our cups, we've got stencil fan and sanding is my cardio and our name and um, I love it and swirl, stencil versus, stipple versus swirl. Super fun, we had so much. Do you wanna get a close up of that, Rusty? Yes. Can you do it? And while you are looking at our fun little tumbler, um, tell us what's in your tumbler today. Okay. We may or may not have wine. I feel like I can't say that without <laughs> lying. I have like this rule not to lie. And um, let's see. Uh, well, we may or may not. We so may I guess or I may mean, not. I'm, We're not. I may. We may. We may. <laughs> okay. So now we'll go into the other side. And actually, I kind of want to do just like one side. Okay. For those of you who are nervous about the 60 grit sandpaper idea, um, so say you do this and say, okay, we'll, we'll go worst case scenario, you completely and utterly hate what you did. Okay, so there's a couple ways that you can do a fix. Um, you can take this tile stencil. Number one, you could rebase coat this board. Um, that is no harm, no foul. You can have as much, you can make a two inch tall board just putting layers of paint on there. Um, but you can totally, um, rebase coat the board and then replace your stencil on it and bring it back to where you liked it. Or you could leave your background distressed and then you could put your stencil back on top. If you didn't like the stencil -y part being distressed, you could put the stencil back on and you could, um, you could correct it, okay? Or you could do the distressing technique to your background before you paint it and then you can put your stencil on top and then you can have pristine with distressed. So there's a lot of ways that you can play with that. So don't think of it as just like at the end, you could do this at any stage in between and make it your project. That's what I love about it. Yeah. This is for years, darn, sorry, you were gonna. No, no, okay. no I'm looking for, for a link to share. For years, um, you know, like the, the art of stenciling is making it your own the art of stenciling is choosing your colors. So if you go back and look at that other live that we did with the color chooser, um, that's super cool. But this personalizing your home, if I go to a big box store and I go to their sign section, I can buy a lot of things that are white and gray right now. Um, but if my house is, you know, cream yellow with red and green, I'm not gonna find something that's going to fit. So that's where stencils come in. It makes it your personal creation. So I like that. Okay, so we've got 50-50. So, you know, you can decide if you like that or you can decide if you want it even more. I could really get in there and make it old school, like antique. -y. Almost like a faded denim. So look at, look at how cool that is. That's freaking cool, guys. That's that amazing. Cool. I love that. Love, man. Okay, so super fun, right? Okay, so now let's talk about what we would do if we were antiquing. So I'm gonna get a brush in good condition. Okay, so our polyfoam brushes are 
absolutely the best. And I have a cruddy version. Um, these flop. See how I push on that? And I'm not pushing hard, but they just flop. So they don't, they don't like stand. Okay, so this guy, if I do that, it, it doesn't even move. Um, and he's a new brush. And then these guys have, I'm gonna destroy this because that's what you should do on a Tuesday. Um, so he's all glued up. Okay, so this has got this plastic um, thing inside of it, okay? So that's super cool. That's nice and supportive, you'd think, but it gives up at the end, and that's why that just collapses and does that thing. This guy right here, I'm gonna take apart a older brush. This guy has both things going on. So it has um, a better quality material, and get it pulled apart here. This goes almost all the way up to the very tip, and the wood stick goes inside, and that is what makes it such a more quality brush. And when you see what we're gonna do with the um, antiquing, you'll understand why we need a quality brush. Okay, so I'm gonna take some black paint. Um, and then something that I wanted to share um, when we're talking about choosing colors and things like that, um, you shouldn't always um, antique with like colors. Um, a lot of colors don't translate very well into antiquing, so be careful with that. If you try antiquing with a color, um, even with black, say say I get this done and I'm heavy handed and I don't like it and whatever, um, if you do that, have paper towels ready to go, water that you can dip into and you can just wipe it all back off and that will help you um, with like security, knowing that you can do that and not not screw up the whole thing. Okay, so I'm like, time, time yeah. out, time, time out. out. Time we out. have a giveaway, I'm running behind. Um, so Amelia just asked a question that mm. we will answer and she'll get a, um, a giveaway as well. Can you distress the project oh. even after you've sealed it yep. with the min wax polyurethane? Yep, you can do it even if you've waxed it. You can do it if you've, um, it, you can do it again um, at any stage. And um, you can, I've even taken projects that, um, that I have waxed and I've sanded them to kind of rough up the wax and then I've painted on top of the wax. Okay. It's not recommended on wax, but on the poly, right. poly won't affect it at all. So that's, yes, unless it's satin, um, shiny, shiny leaves. So this one didn't get much sanding. So I'm gonna knock back my, um, the, um, I got one of those things on the back. Um, so I'm gonna knock that back. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want the antiquing to catch on my ridges, besides the fact that I like a smooth project when I'm done. And I just wanna say real quick, we've had a lot of people asking, um, we are painting, the tiles are painted on a um, an MDF surface. Mm -hmm. It's not actually a tile. Yeah, it's yeah just, this is a it's wood a, It's a wood piece, MDF yeah. surface. And yeah, and this is like super hardboard. Um, mm -hmm. We use it for everything, really. Yes. Yeah, we have, we have Baltic birch that we use too, um, but it just isn't, I don't know, I don't, I don't like it as much. I really don't mind pine. Um, we paint the um, tall porch mm -hmm. signs on pine, but um, pine has, pine is heavy. Um, it is, yeah, it's, it's just, there's problems with pine too. So this has been super um, like easy to paint on. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and show you how to do this antiquing technique that you can use on any of your projects. Okay, so I'm gonna get this situated so we can see on the overhead camera. All right, so I'm using a dry foam brush. Um, like the dome brushes, um, these work much better if you use them dry. So don't have it in water and then pull it out and think you're gonna be able to do things. If you wanted to mix water with your paint and base coat with that, you could do that, but it won't be good for antiquing. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna use the edge of our brush gonna dip that in <clears throat> and then this technique is I'm gonna talk my brush dry because that's what I always do um, this technique starts on the edge and then I flip and lift so I start on the edge and I flip and lift okay so that's like the movement and sometimes it's really hard to see that um, on video Steve your mother-in-law just commented and said that she's watching with no sound because your baby's um 
trying not to sleep on her. <laughs> <laughs> Steve has got the cutest baby ever. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now we're gonna take this right here and we're gonna go on the edge of our board and we're going to just flip and lift. And it's a really quick little flippy lifty thing. But then note that I'm gonna go down the side. Okay, and I'm just so light pressure, you wouldn't even believe how light the pressure is. Down the side, so all of my lines are gonna be going in the same direction. I'll turn it around, reload my brush, and then I'm going to flip and lift. This is one of those techniques that should terrify you. And uh, the only reason I'm saying that is because like, let's get real. Um, I wanna be like the most honest person I can. Um, this takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of finessing. Once you get it, you got it. But don't do it on a finished thing and have a scrap board. You know, um, yeah. get, get some lumber, um, you know, just watch that part of the video over and over, um, play with your technique. I don't think this would be a good, if anybody's practiced this on cardboard, maybe make a yeah. comment and let us know that that works. Um, Cardboard has texture, so sometimes that can be a problem when you're doing this technique. Mm -hmm. um, you're flipping and lifting, and um, that just FYI. You don't want to pull that one off mm. the wall because it's a little more um, eyebrow-y than you typically do. I don't yeah. think you did that one. Okay, so here's an example. Who painted this one, Judah? Uh, I don't even I know. Not. Okay, so um, I call things like an eyebrow. We talked about that over here with this um, um, going across just the little edge of the thing. So this is a little bit liney, um, just a little bit, okay? And then this does not feel like it's finished. So to repair, let's talk about repairing because that's a really good, thank mm -hmm. you for pointing that out. Um, okay, first of all, like so right here where this is very square, I don't like that. That's not how I like things, okay? So I'm gonna go in here and I can just gently, you hear the, like not heavy sounding mm -hmm. sounds? I can gently diffuse that. So now my red is still there, but my eyebrow is a little bit less. So very much like makeup, you can kind of, you know, blend and do things when you want them to be a little bit more or less. Okay. And then I've got this um, sanding through my red, so why don't I extend that just a little bit so that it doesn't stand alone. Okay, so I could go in there and kind of dig into that. I could also go in there and increase right at my edge. So I could make it a little bit heavier so I get a little bit of depth and dimension. Um, I was talking with one of our um, other employees in here. Um, Dustin is made so many of these stencils, you wouldn't believe it. But he has been a teacher over at Boardroom, which is our shop in town. And he has taught for three years, I think. Mm -hmm. um, he was, we were talking about what kind of techniques we want to make sure, because he's had hundreds of people through um, teaching them to paint with stencils and stuff like that. And um, he was like, talk to them about values. So um, if you want your antiquing to be not so heavy, um, then use colors. And when we say value, that's an art word. Okay, if I use this color teal and this color, the lightness of these is they're both about the same, right? They're both, if you squint your eyes, they kind of read the same. They're both the same. Almost like if you were doing spicy food, they both be like salt, you know? So then, ooh, our paint drawer is getting messy in here. <laughs> Whoa, everything. Okay, if we had a strong value difference, then we might go here and here. And notice this one's really dark and this one's really light. So if my background was this and I wanted to do this on top, then I have a big value change. So if you want subtle, be little value. If you want bold, go big bold. Go big. Go big or go, go home. Go big or go home. <laughs> okay, I have a question and a giveaway winner. I'm <laughs> Kathy, I'm sorry. I'm going to try real hard. I'm a glutton for punishment today with names. So the, the winner of our next $10 giveaway is Kathy Fowler Chicomi. 
I'm not, uh, we're gonna, you're gonna tell me how to say that. But her question is, do you varnish first before antiquing? No, I would, uh, you can. You can. You can. If you go back and change it. Yeah, if you okay. want to change it after you get it done, I would always varnish at the end. That's just kind of a general rule. Um, if you wax, um, the wax, we use a Minwax. Um, Minwax paste in natural, and we do a special dark, which is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Do we have any of that? Um, let's see, is it on the shelf? Oh, it's there. there, it's here. Let's just go there. Um, I think that this is a really neat lesson. Now this is a petroleum product, so it is going to be stinky, so you wanna use this in a ventilated area. I'm gonna put my foam brush in my water so that I don't um, waste it. And I do not, generally speaking, use um, the petroleum product with my bare hands. Okay, so I can make a makeshift glove with my bag. You just get in there. We have these little sponges for sale on our website um, and they just live inside that um, and it doesn't seem to affect them at all. But when you go with the special dark, see what it does to the sanding. Is that not glorious? It's yes. so beautiful. And it knocks back your whites just a hair mm -hmm. and it makes it so lovely and so pretty so definitely and then the wax is good for indoor or outdoor and it's one of the hardest surface hardest finishes that you'll ever use and glennis just asked she said she finally just got the men wax and wants to know how many coats do you use with it um i think just one if you're if you're gonna do something brutal with it you know um if i was gonna put a project out in the sunshine um on a florida porch, you know, or something like that, I would probably, in a really rainy place, I'd probably poly. Okay. Um, if I was doing it for a sort of protected and indoor, I would, the wax is just phenomenal. Love the wax. Myself. We have a boatload of questions, Patricia. Yay. Go for it. All right. So we've had a couple, so we're going to put a, I don't like to put timelines on things, but we're going to put a timeline on okay. something. We've had several people ask us about using letters and spacing mm. and when our lettering tool is coming out. Okay, the lettering tool is sitting on my desk. <laughs> it's on my desk. Yeah. Oh, it's on your <laughs> desk, that's right, it is. It, it is. was on her desk um, and it made it to my desk. So you guys, that's progress. Yeah, that is progress. So uh, yeah, so it's it, one of those things. Um, we, so we invented it in my head um, when we, um, we were talking about something and it was like, how do you space it and why, why isn't there a tool? And then I got together with Dustin and we were like, okay, we've taught a ton of people how to do this and we do personalized things. Let's get serious about this. So we came up with the prototype, mm -hmm. trashed the prototype, came up with another <laughs> prototype. And then we, um, now it's on the desk waiting for me to put my hands on it and give it the final stamp of approval. I don't want to release it until it's great. And yeah. And yeah. Um, but I would say probably next two weeks. It'll and probably you be know, live. we we get a lot of questions about when are things going to be released. There's a, we have a a lot of, a lot of hands that touch it. It's mm. a long process. Yeah. Um, we try to make it quick. Yeah. But quick can be mistakes, and then yes. we have to recover from mistakes, and I don't like that. I'm going to go backwards one step here, and go back to this special dark, um, because I think this is you know I threw away my. Temporary gloves. You guys, these um, fold top bags are available at Walmart <laughs> and they are magic that you roll up your roller in them. Um, you know, that's how last week's roller is still sitting here. Um, and it is squishy and mushy and wonderful, but they don't have the zipper. So it lets them completely fold over the top. So um, that's why I like these and they make phenomenal temporary gloves. Can you sh um, pop up the can again for the wax? Someone yeah. asked if this you is see it. is where do you want this? Right here. Can and you? I will share the links. We have a natural and a special mm -hmm. dark. The special dark, is. special dark. We can't find it in stores, um, so we have to order it from like Amazon or um, whatever online place you like to order from. Watch what this does. Actually, I, this is cool, but I think I'm going to do it on this blue. So the special dark is even pretty. And make sure you're putting your um, wax down the same way, especially if you're doing a color, the same direction as your lines go, okay? So look what that does. It just knocks that back. 
and just makes that have so much character. Okay, so isn't that amazing, the difference between the two sides? You know, and if I wanted to, I could go put a little bit of extra in my corners and then smooth it out. And if I really wanted to, I could go buff it out with a paper towel and remove it from the middle and leave it heavy on the edges. So see how that makes them like a kind of a glow? Um, I think that that is a really neat technique to know about. So we but, just had, sorry. No, that's okay. We've had a- I'll just keep talking. Um, <laughs> just a couple FYI. questions about when you, when you choose what. So if we are finishing a project that's gonna be indoors, we will typically use the wax. Mm -hmm. If we are doing a project that is going to be outdoors and the elements, then we will do mm -hmm. the poly. Yeah. Is, is what we typically do. Yeah, and then there are, there are no hard and fast rules. If you're doing a finish for outside projects, um, you're gonna want to um, not use a gloss product. I painted, I painted a um, stepping stone and gloss really does a beautiful thing to um, finishes and stuff. I painted it with gloss and I stepped outside and first I got blinded by the reflection and then I couldn't read the art or see what was on the stone because the glare was so big. And so gloss for outside is not, not cool, but um, it's cool in other places. Okay, I want to show, I'm gonna talk about these letters. Okay, so one thing, we're talking about things being not the same. So we go back to this guy right here. So if, say, you wanted to put a different word here or um, you wanted to leave something off, you could do that. Um, a lot of things that you can do with these alphabet stencils is, um, and they go down to really tiny. So number one, on the back of your board, you could put like made with love from Patty on the back. So you could use these to just actually put a little message to your person. Mm -hmm. um, but you can personalize with these and they come in all the sizes. And we've even got cute little um, little symbols and some, some of them have arrows and they have cute things. So they're really neat little tools to have. Once we have that lettering guide, you're really gonna go to town and you're gonna love these. All right, I have one more technique and then we have a special announcement, so say hang on to the end. Um, we are going to um, do one more framing technique. I'm gonna use my fine sander. Yeah, the difference is so, so tremendous. Oops. And then one thing that you might find if you sand, oh, so here's an interesting thing. This had a brush hair. Sometimes these brush hairs fall out, like this one has a hair, it has a little wild hair. Um, they fall out and they stick in your paint. Um, it's best to leave them till the end, but if you get something like that that leaves a mark, you can take a touch of your base coat and then just go in and base it out if you're wanting a crisp look. So if otherwise you can try to pick that hair out while it's wet and get it smooth and stuff like that. Um, Patricia, yes. Patricia wants to oh, know. Oh, Patricia. <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I made you Patricia first. Patricia, how long does the wax last on a project? Um, the wax lasts, I mean, forever that I know. I haven't, um, I haven't asked the wax, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, no, um, if you are using something that, so for example, and then there's one more kind of wax we want to kind of touch on. We have the, um, and this is to go with that question, this is the Clapham's um, Beeswax Salad Bowl Finish. Okay, this is, um, this is food safe. So if I was using something like a baby height chair that I painted with, that was wood, and I, or baby toys, or a serving dish, or a salad bowl, or something like that, um, I would, um, I would redo it, you know, once a year, kind of like a cutting board. Um, but on a hanging art sign, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, I would just do it once and be done. Um, Joyce wants to know if your ring gets in the way of sanding or ruining it. If my wedding ring? Yeah, I'm um, assuming swipes. Yeah, I, oh, when I do that now, it's really smooth. Um, I actually had a diamond wedding ring and it would bend backwards all the time and gouge my finger when I was doing anything. It would help with the sanding process. It would, it would make it distressed. <laughs> it made my hand 
but distressed is what it did. And um, so yeah, I took that off and, um, and then eventually just replaced it with a smooth. So I've never noticed that, um, but it doesn't seem to be marking. Oh, but that reminds me of what I was going to say is if you leave marks and you're doing the fine sanding, you leave marks on there, you can take a damp paper cloth and you can wet it in the water clean water and then you could wipe over it and that will remove your marks so if you get marks you don't want in your fine sanding then you which can kind of goes back full circle full circle to the to yeah, our yes. original question yep. about using exactly. that um dorita asked about the the wax coming in a clear can you can you open yeah. the natural i can yeah yeah hang on apparently i have three special darks I was worried about not having any. And if you notice, we don't even seal these jars. Um, so I, I really don't like the smell of petroleum products on my hands. <laughs> so I am not going to touch that sponge. Okay, so that's what the clear looks like. Yeah, and it's just, a, it's and kind of just a neutral. Yeah, it's it just goes on clear. Well, let's, let's do it. Jarita, you asked, you get. Um, you could do it on the. I'm gonna do it on the other side of this Yeah. Bit. Get him out of the way. And so this looks like that. So I can see that there's slightly something on there, mm -hmm. but I don't see anything on there. And then I have a little bit of like grit, probably from my table. Um, I can go on there after I've waxed it and I can buff that off. Okay. So does that do yes, that? Yes, that okay. covers that and I am going to give away one more ten dollar giveaway to we're gonna give it to nicole parker congratulations nicole and so um a couple things a couple mm -hmm. housekeeping things yeah. so if you are still watching make sure you like share and comment mm -hmm. so that you can be entered to win the 30 dollar um, grand prize we're giving away three of those tomorrow we will announce them tomorrow around one o'clock so you have 24 hours yep. to watch like share comment and we had a couple people ask about a place to be sharing their finished product so we haven't mm. talked about this in mm -hmm. a while but on our Facebook page you can go to the there's a, a, a tabs section where it has like events and posts if you click posts you can upload your photos there and then it will come up in the community section so if you go to the community tab then you can scroll through and Everybody's see what projects. other people are sharing yeah. so that's a really great place to share and then you know occasionally we'll be able to share from there as well but there is a place to do it go to the posts and upload a photo just like you would on your normal Facebook timeline and then go to community and that's where it pops up. Yeah, and I, we've toyed around with having, um, you know, a special Facebook mm -hmm. page, uh, you know, something that's just for like a group or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like a lot of work. <laughs> you know, I already have a job. You guys, social media is such hard work. It's so, so much work. So we want to be there, but boy. <sighs> So let's move on to one final thing. One final thing. One final thing. So we'd said that you have to um, follow along with our newsletters yeah. to get our sales. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I have one more thing to show before you do that okay. final thing. Stay tuned then. Hang on. Sneak Almost. Peek. Okay. So we talked about oh, the, um, the yeah, the spattering, right? So. This is, and look at how, I don't know, Rusty, can you see into, does it help to do that? So um, see how that's cut and feathered? It is the most amazing brush. Okay, so we um, had to upsize. We were using this size, and literally this size was the size that um, Ross Style Cup asked us to have for a class I took years and years, I think it was 30 years ago, 20 years ago, and um, so I had that brush. Um, that was the size I used, so I didn't change it. And then I found out that it would do spattering, and then I was like, cool. And toothbrushes are great and fine, but they tend to leave a trajectory. And so um, I don't tend to like toothbrushes for that. So I'm gonna dip into my water. I'm gonna do some white, and I'm gonna show some framing on the outside of this, so. While you're doing brush. that, Dee asked, how long do you wait before buffing the wax? Um, 
I'm going to answer this other question first. Um, do not leave anything laying around while you are going to be spattering because the spatters were jumping and leaping towards other things. All of our projects. All of our projects, yes. Are now spattered. Yes. <laughs> okay, what was the question? Because I'm watching that in horror while you were saying that. How long do you wait before buffing the wax? Um, you can do it right away. Yeah, right away is fine. Okay, so if I wanted to spatter around the outside of my project, number one, I'm going to be away from projects I don't want spatters on. Okay, and I'm going to, can you see that okay on the camera? I've got water, like I've thinned this to the consistency of ink or milk. I'm gonna spatter off without trying to hit that other project. Okay, and then I'm wherever direction my brush is pointed in is the direction that I'm going to want to, um, I want to aim it to the outside, so I want So I can get right around the edges of that. But if I went right in the middle, it would just be everywhere. So I can turn it. And if you have something you want nice on the backside, don't go through your spatters because that's all wet. That stays wet for a good long time. So I can go in the corner. And then notice I'm arching, I'm arching the angle of my brush. So I'm not I'm keeping it where the outside of the, the board is. And then if I wanted it to snow on a project, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and snow on this guy, then I can go straight over the top. And I don't know if it's picking it up, but a there's a bit. big snow, snow <laughs> flurry going on here. So if I want snow, I go up high. If I want control, and this is the last thing, and then we can make that and special then, announcement. The last one. Okay, so if I want to really, really, really get control, I anchor this supporting brush, and then I can get right exactly where I want it to be. Okay, super good control technique. All right, now what's our final the announcement? The final announcement is we've been talking a lot about tile stencils lately today mm -hmm. so today only and for you guys on this live that knows about it because you're watching yeah so yeah. um this isn't going to be posted anywhere no else. it's not posted anywhere else but today only mm -hmm. the tile stencils are 30 percent off Woo i just shared the link cheers cheers to tile stencils love so i just shared the link with you guys and you can go in there and you can see all of the tile stencils. So many tile stencils. And like then, it took us a year. Yeah. Yeah. When you so add many. when you add the tile stencil to your cart, the 30% off discount will show. So it won't show until you add it to your cart. But it is only until eleven fifty nine PM tonight because it um, turns into a uh, into it turns into a pumpkin. <laughs> Because Cinderella, because pumpkin pie. Cinderella is coming tomorrow <laughs> with our first uh, round of holiday sales. Yeah, make sure you guys go to our website and um, sign up for our newsletters. There, it'll be in that the 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 turn the wheel thing is what gets you signed up for it, and it also gives you a valuable coupon as well, mm -hmm. so you can use that. Yeah, I don't think you can do two together, but you'll have a coupon that you can use. And um, I think Happy Thanksgiving and yeah. cheers, you guys. Happy Thanksgiving.